Let's take a quick look at two examples here, writing the formula for chemical compounds. So we have the names and we want to get to the formulas. And these are good examples to help us learn that. So calcium chloride, if you look at the periodic table divided into metals, metalloids, and nonmetals, here's calcium. That's a metal. Chlorine, that's a nonmetal. So we have a metal and a nonmetal. And when we have a metal and a nonmetal, we have an ionic compound. And with ionic compounds, we have to think about the charge on the ions. But for sulfur dioxide, sulfur is right here. That's a nonmetal. And oxygen, that's also a nonmetal. So we have two nonmetals. When we have two nonmetals, we have what's called a covalent compound. This is also called molecular. And because the electrons are shared between the sulfur and the oxygen atoms, we don't have to worry about ions. We don't have ions involved, so we don't need to worry about ionic charge. So let's write the formula first for calcium chloride, which is our ionic compound. Since we're dealing with ions, we have to deal with charge. And this is a general trend for ionic charge. Group one is one plus, two is two plus, skip the transition metals, three plus, then we go three minus, two minus, one minus, and zero. So we said calcium was right here. That's gonna be two plus, And chlorine was over here in group 17. That's gonna be one minus. So we know the charges. There's a link to a more in-depth discussion about ionic charge at the end of this video. So we write Ca and Cl. We said two plus and one minus. We're gonna use the crisscross method. We move the one here, the two here, get rid of this. And we don't write the one by convention. And the formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. And remember, because we have a metal and a nonmetal, we had to deal with these ionic charges. For sulfur dioxide, we have the two nonmetals. All we need to do is use prefixes when we write the formula. So we write S for sulfur and O for oxygen. And it says sulfur dioxide. Di means two, so we'll have two oxygens. And it's just sulfur, so we have one of those, but we don't write the one. So this is the formula for sulfur dioxide. And we use these prefixes because we had two nonmetals, so covalent or molecular compound. So to recap, when you're dealing with metal and nonmetal, that's going to be ionic. You're going to have to worry about ionic charge. When you're dealing with covalent compounds, two nonmetals, you don't need to worry about charge, and you can use the prefixes to show the number of atoms. This is Dr. B with two examples for writing chemical formulas. Thanks for watching.